Well, it's another day, guys, and, and I wanted to show you how I'm lapping the valves. And last week on Friday, I was able to lap the first five cylinders, and I filmed all that, but luckily, I didn't do the sixth one, because last night, as I was downloading all the videos, I realized that the lighting is horrible, and you can't see anything. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you here the sixth one, and I'm going to film it again. So... The sixth, the sixth cylinder actually is not too bad. I wish I could show you what number five looked like. And now it is so much better. The intake was pretty good. That's the intake valve. But the exhaust was horrible. And now the exhaust looks fantastic. I'm pretty happy with it. And that's the actual valve. Well. Actually, there's still some pits here and there. So maybe I should do a little bit more on the exhaust on the fifth cylinder. Yeah, I want to get rid of these pits as well. And then we're going to go to number six. But here is what number six looks like. So the intake. The intakes in general weren't bad. And that's its seat. Yeah, you see, there are pits here and there that needs to be that need to be taken care of when they need to be polished. This one, the exhaust, mm, has some lines. Hopefully, we can get rid of them. This is the valve, and yeah, there's a little bit of a line on the valve itself. Well, can't show you. Let's see what's gonna happen. So let's do number five, the exhaust and see if we can get rid of these pits and we're gonna go from there so we're gonna use this two lap lapper tool we're gonna stick it to the valve possibly in the center and we're using this valve grinding compound 80037 that's what i've been using forever and i'm pretty happy with it and we're gonna put some compound here on the surface where it meets the seat okay that's enough then on the stem we definitely need some uh, lubrication so i'm gonna put wd-40 And I'm going to drop it down carefully so we don't make a mess all over the place. We want to keep the compound only on this surface that we want to grind and then clean it very carefully because if we don't clean it, it might end up in the valve guide and wear it or in the cylinder later. So we don't want it there. We want to clean it perfectly after we're done. And then we start this. doesn't need too much pressure and I guess you can hear the noise so the noise is pretty sandy but every once in a while I lift it so the compound that was pushed out it comes back in I hope you can hear how in the beginning it is more like you can hear it sounding and then at the end the as the compound gets spread out you can't hear it that rough anymore it's very smooth which means it doesn't do much you see now you can hear the sounding it's just sliding so we lift it and we do it again and now you can hear the sounding again right but don't press too much you don't need to put any pressure because you might make channels around the seat just 
very, very slight pressure. And it's gonna be perfect. Okay, so let's clean it and inspect it. Well, before I clean it, I wanted to show you what it looks like. It turned like milk, where in the beginning it looked like that, you see? Here that which spread on the other side, that wasn't used. And it is still, you can see it like sandpaper. So it's basically like liquid sandpaper. And it works well in the beginning, but then the more you use it, the more it turns into milk. So you have to wipe it and, and put more fresh compound there. So that's the seat, that's the valve. I think here is where they were, all the pits. Yeah. Right here. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna touch it anymore. I think that's fine. And I'm just gonna clean this and we're gonna move on to number six. Okay, so this is number six. The intake. Pretty good. And the valve looks great. So that was a really, really short time I ground it, but it looks fantastic. Like there was some other cylinder, I don't remember which one, but there was one which when I started, it had a very, very narrow line that was touching. But then as I kept going, it became wider as this one. And here the same. And here we are perfect. Yeah, I'm actually really happy with this cylinder. It wasn't bad to begin with. So let's do the exhaust. On the exhaust here, this, this is the line that worries me. So let's see if we can get rid of it. Okay. And here is the exhaust, nice and even wide surface, I'm happy with it. And here the line is gone, so the whole entire, uh oh, there's something here. Yeah, and here it is barely closing. See very narrow line and there's a vertical line even which means it's going to leak from there. So we're going to keep going until that disappears. Okay, that's much better. It took us another 10 minutes. Everything is lapped now. And uh, we can clean the head like I have to go very carefully now through the entire head and clean it and then we're gonna move on to something else just wanted to show you something here that uh, there are four different suction cups here for different valve sizes and in general i use these two the second and the third by size and if you have a lot to grind you can actually do this you can pull this suction cup and use one of these adapters for the small one you can use the quarter inch adapter put it here and and spin your valve with it however you have to be very careful not to press too hard and not to spin it too fast because you might create lines. Don't ask me how I know. So the maximum speed should be this. And then again, every once in a while, like do a second, 
and lift do a second and lift. because particles from the compound may stay may fall into a channel inside and keep spinning inside the same channel all the time and make it deeper and deeper that's why you have to lift every once in a while so you kind of shuffle the particles underneath but the safest is this because you go in two different directions and the particles supposedly shuffle themselves oh and by the way for the bigger cup you can use a 3 8 adapter and do the same thing just put it inside and again put it on your gun and use it so anyways don't ask me how i know these things because once you create lines it's hard to get rid of them so anyways let's move on to something else well, actually, it's a month later. I know I was in the middle of a joke here, grinding valves, flapping valves and stuff like that. And then, and then the disaster happened. I broke my leg. As many of you may know, I broke my leg and that was four weeks now, but by the time you watch this video, probably it's gonna be six or maybe eight weeks. Anyways, I was so far ahead with all the work on this car and on other cars as well and uh, so far behind with editing videos that I actually was able to keep posting videos regularly about all the projects. I posted maybe 10 videos until I caught up with everything and just now I start filming with my broken leg. So anyways, and during this month it occurred to me here about this project that I never measured the valve to valve guide clearance so I set up a little jig here and I'm gonna go ahead and measure all of the valves and we're gonna see if we need to change guides then obviously we're gonna have to reel up everything with the new guides and the new valves because if we change guides we're gonna change valves as well so anyways let me show you my setup here and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and measure all of them and see what that's gonna show us. Maybe all the lapping that we've done so far might be useless. <laughs> we will see. All right, so here is my setup. I hope you see the gauge there. It's very simple. According to the manual, the valve clearance here, the valve to valve guide plate should be measured as the valve is lifted just a little bit, maybe to the point which it normally opens when the engine is running. But to do that, I wasn't able to put the gauge down there because if I put the gauge all the way down there, it's gonna be on a 45 degrees and my measurements are not gonna be correct. That's why I use this ruler here. And because of course there's gonna be a little bit of a difference how much the ruler goes here because it pivots here. There's gonna be a very little difference between this height and this height but that's why I, I clamped it as high as possible so this difference is going to be so small that it's not going to be uh, relevant I guess anyways the manual says that the tolerance here is 20 tau but I see that something is not correct in the manual and we had this experience with Chef Tash as well so anyways let's measure everything first and then we'll see so here you see, if I move the ruler, it moves a lot. So let's see, I'm just shaking the valve from underneath and that's how, it, how much it goes. It's like five tau, five, six, six tau, I would say. Whatever I do, can't make it go more than that. So that's my setup. I'm going to do that for all 12 valves. I'm going to record that and then we're going to go and compare that with the manual or we might need to source additional information because I don't trust the manual for this particular number. All right, so this is what I found out. Like some of them, the minimum is three tau here, 
the minimum is 3 tau, but there's one which is 10 tau, and there's this one 9, 8, 7, 6. So it's all over the place between 3 and 10. And to be honest, um, the manual says 20 tau, but that's a lot. I actually came back and remeasured this one because I was concerned. I thought maybe I made a mistake, but it is 10 tau. It's maybe even 11. And if you look closely here, that's a lot of play. So imagine, so imagine if we have double that as a tolerance, I don't know. I'm gonna have to go and look them up. I'm just curious to see if all these are, the ones with the big tolerances are all intake because this is intake, right? So uh, this is exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake intake exhaust exhaust intake intake exhaust right yeah the last one is exhaust so the biggest ones 10 tau is intake 9 tau is intake and 8 tau is intake the other intakes are 4 5 and 4 hmm. and we have two exhaust ones that are pretty big 7 and 6 Anyways, let me put a date here. We're going to enter this in the computer and I'm going to go and do some research and see if this is acceptable or not. All right, so here I have the this brown manual on my computer, Triumph Motors, British Leyland, UK Limited. Anyway, so this uh, manual on page 78, at least in the PDF, if it's page 78, it shows this valve to guide clearance, or they call it running clearance also. And according to this manual, it's, it is point, 0 0.20 inch or 0 0.508 millimeters. When you convert these millimeters into inches, it's actually 0 0.020. So that's a typo definitely. It's not, it's not 0 0.20, it's 0 0.020, which is 20 tau, but still that, seems to be a little bit too high of a tolerance for me. So I checked this Bentley manual, which is virtually the same. It shows exactly the same picture with the exact same, even the continued word here is in the same place. So one is reprint of the other. I didn't know that, but anyways, so this one also says 0.20, but if you convert half a millimeter to inches, it's going to be 0 0.020, which is 20 tau. But still, I don't know whether I should trust those manuals. I don't have any other manuals. Uh, I looked in forums and stuff, and people are talking for tolerances between 2 and 5 tau, something like that, which we have for most, most of them, 4, 4, 5, 3, 7, but then here we have these big ones and I don't know if you should trust them, because if we trust this, ignoring the typo of course, we are halfway through the tolerance on the worst one, but I don't know, I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research on that. All right, I decided to check the TR4 workshop manual and here on page 53, we have at the bottom all these numbers. So these make more sense. So the stem, the stem to guide clearance is for inlet is one to three tau. The wear limit is 38 10 thousandths and the exhaust is three to five tau and the wear limit is 63 10 thousandths. The tolerance is a little bit bigger on the exhausts, but we, what we have here is all our inlets are bigger. So, you know what, guys? I'm gonna trust this and I'm gonna say no to these valve guides. We're gonna have to buy new valves and new valve guides, and we're gonna have to lap them again with the new guides in place. So, that's that. And in this case, I think we should focus now on the cylinders. Because, like I said before, I think I said it, <laughs> it was a month ago, <laughs> uh, the crank is not very good. Uh, we have some marks here. 
So even without measuring it, I know that it's gonna need grinding. So we don't wanna do that since we have on the shelf, we have a crank that I measured from the other engine and we know that that crank is good. It's actually standard size. I mean, it's actually still with the factory measurements and it's still within tolerances. So we're gonna use that crank and let's see those cylinders then. Well, as you may have guessed, this is gonna happen in the next video because it's a whole new topic and I'll end this one here. So thanks for watching guys, thanks for commenting and subscribing and I'll see you soon with more episodes of the Rusty Beauties. Bye!